Everybody hear me? Yes? Thank you so very much. We're kind of running out of time here, so we're going to start really fast. My name is Daniel Morales. I work for Telemundo Channel 47. I'm also a University of Houston alum, so go Cougs. So welcome. I want to thank you for being here. If you'd like to participate in the Q&A question, we've got to do a little bit of housekeeping. You were given an index card. We're going to ask you to write down the question and pass it to one of the runners that we're going to have around the room. We hope to have at least 15 to 20 minutes of Q&A at the end of the lecture. Um, now, please join me in welcoming Dr. Ira Colby, Dean of the Graduate School of Social Work. Dean Colby. Thank you. I'm real pleased to welcome you all to this very exciting lecture this afternoon. Uh, our Chancellor and President, Renu Couture, um, is unfortunately not able to be here. And she's over in Austin fighting our battle to make sure that we get more funding from the state to continue our quest to be the best public tier one university in the state of Texas. And she wishes she could be here. Just a, a couple of words about the Gulan Institute, because I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, what is a Gulan, what is this? Um, Fatula Gulan is a religious spiritual leader from Turkey. Um, he's considered, if you will, similar to a Mahatma Gandhi, uh, a Martin Luther King, because of his visions and ideas around peace and justice that all people should be treated as brother and sisters. And at the same time, we must sit down and talk with each other, not at each other. He very much opposes violence, and he thinks the best way for us to understand and to achieve justice for all people is through dialogue. And so through the Gulan Institute, the G University of Houston College of Social Work, we bring in various people throughout the years to help us think about things from a different perspective. Last year, we had the Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan. The year before, we had... Uh, former Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, and the year before that, Secretary of State James Baker. We bring in people with different perspectives so that we can have a dialogue with each other. And today, we are incredibly fortunate to have with us as a speaker an individual who literally changed the history of Mexico. He was elected, the first opposition person elected to be president of Mexico since 1920. And part of his reform movement was about education saying that the only way that we can achieve justice and peace for all people is through education. And what you will find today, you'll hear that message. And now that he is out of office, he and his wife, Mata, and thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you very much. They have created a foundation. And their foundation is to focus on young people. And every year, they bring over 100,000 young Mexican children to their foundation to plant the seeds of hope for the future, to say, you can become the president of Mexico. You can become a physician. You can become a change agent for positive causes in our country. And so it's with a great pleasure that I introduce to you a good friend to the United States, a good friend to the world, and truly an inspirational leader, President Vicente Fox. Mr. President. Muchísimas gracias. Buenas tardes. ¿Sí se oye? ¿No? Como que no está jalando bien el micrófono. Ponte el señor del micrófono. ¿Dónde andas? ¿Sí? No, ya, yeah, I know, I know they're listening. Yes, yes, I know. Marta, the boss, spoke. So now we can hear. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for this invitation. Thank you to the Gulan Institute. We're here to have a chat with all of you. And I am sure that, at least for Martha and myself, we'll have the great opportunity also hearing from you, listening about your thoughts, your opinions, your questions. So thank you for that. And let me start with some words that have to do with Mr. Gulan in the Institute. Be so tolerant that your bosom becomes wide like the ocean. Become inspired with faith and love of human beings. Let there be no troubled souls 
to whom you do not offer a hand and about whom you remain unconcerned. Great words on a path to happiness by being for others is the way we can have that happiness, that peace within ourselves. That's the way we can accomplish our dreams and that's the way we can build up our leadership. Because we are pure conscience and pure conscience is pure potentiality. It's inner power that we all have. We must gift ourselves, says Deepra Chopak, with five minutes in silence so that we question who we are. Where are we going? What is our purpose? And purpose to me is a very strong word, very meaningful. Most every human action has to have purpose. And the better that purpose is, the more we will accomplish. And if that purpose has to do with others, has to do with love, has to do with compassion, then we are on the right track. I also have my hero in this kind of thinking, and it's San Ignacio de Loyola. This man that 500 years ago created the largest global university system and the school system. And you know how he did it? He, of course, was a man of the world, not a man of God then. And he was quite travieso, quite inquieto. But then he had an accident. And in that accident, he was taken to the hospital and he spent some days there. And he had a time to do the exercise of asking himself what was his purpose in life that he didn't show that he had before. And then he decided for change. And he decided to be for others. And he convoked a few friends of him, brought them in, and told them, I want you to spend 90 days with me. But we're going to do it in silence. No more instructions. Nothing else he proposed. And 90 days later, he told them, you, Javier, you go to India. You, Pedro, you go to China. And so on and on. One to Latin America. There were no questions on part of them. They took the road. Of course, no airplanes, no trucks. Imagine to go from Spain to China at that time without speaking the language. And they got there, and they conquered souls. They conquered people to the cause of being for others. And that's what we all have within. We all have that kind of power. We all have that leadership to be discovered if we have not done up to now. And then we start the job of making ourselves better leaders every day of our life. We're all leaders, your leader, your leader, your leader. We're leaders all the time of our life. As a matter of fact, we never end up making ourselves leaders, increasing our leadership. If we have purpose, then we perform. And that's the power we all have within. Examples, there's many, many examples. Then you have Nelson Mandela. 
poor kid, no shoes, poor community where he was born and raised. And that's where he grew. He didn't seem to have aspirations. He didn't seem to have the capacity to leave. But when he goes to jail and he has the opportunity to think about his life, his purpose, his plans, he decides to change South Africa. He decides to defeat apartheid. And you just have to see that video when he's coming out of that jail. I mean, he looks so strong, so powerful, so determined. And he came out, and he did make all the changes that that nation needed, South Africa. Martin Luther King, Mahama Gandhi, Lev Walesa, and so many others. As a matter of fact, there's plenty of leaders, especially young women, that don't even know how to read or write. And they have exercised a very strong, powerful leadership. So leadership is within ourselves. Once we discover, then we move ahead if we have a plan. And leadership is not only about knowledge or about learning. Leadership is that special characteristic that come from our beliefs, from our values, and from our determination and will to do something big, great in our lives. And as it was mentioned here, that's what Mark and myself, we do at Centro Fox. Right there in Leon, state of Guanajuato, an hour and 45 minutes flying from Houston, Texas, six flights a day, which means that any time you're willing to go and learn about Centro Park, that's all you have to do. And there, Martha and myself will welcome you with open arms. And Martha and myself will show you what we're doing there, but also you will taste the best mole and enchiladas <laughs> you ever tasted. Of course, you are too young, most of you, so that we would offer you tequila, but we also have the best tequila <laughs> in the world. The world is changing, and it's changing very rapidly, very rapidly. Now we read about this power and financial shift from the West to the East. We read about China becoming the largest economy in the world no more than 10 years from now, the leading economy in the world. And we see, Martha and myself, we just visited Korea and Japan, and we learn how well they are preparing themselves for that leadership that they know will come. And they're preparing because they do have principles, values that they want to share with the rest of the world. In our visit to Korea, eight months ago, invited by government, they were preparing themselves to lead the G20 group, which accounts for 80% of the global gross product. And for the first time ever, an emerging nation like Korea was to lead that meeting. And they invested a lot of time they made a lot of analysis and studies what they were going to propose, how they were going to lead that so strategic meeting of G20. And we saw Japan doing the same. Fortunately, they had this mammoth problem lately. But that whole part of the world is preparing themselves. And the question is, what are we doing on this part of the world?